the grace and the mercy of God, we're not justified by the law. And we, we don't operate from a cardinal perspective, but a spiritual perspective. You're listening today, and this is my introduction. We've got it. I, we had a, like about an hour, 21 segment that I have now cut down to uh, small segments for you to digest what we're talking about. So I want you to enjoy the study that's coming up. And just, but the bottom line is this, you're not under the law. I know people want you to be under the law. I know people want to sit there and condemn people under the law. But the fact is that you're not justified by the law. They know you're not justified by the law. And the fact is that you're not supposed to be trying to condemn other people uh, by the law because you live by faith. And we, we know that the law is there for a schoolmaster. We know that the law is good. But the problem is that it, it is weak to the flesh. We live by faith. We don't live by the law. I don't care if somebody believes they're supposed to enforce the law. You cannot enforce the law on other people. And I'm talking about the Ten Commandments. And the thing about it is, all that said to come short of the glory of God. And, and the other piece is that. Everybody, if you go by the law, the law said that death, it is called, it's death there for a reason. <laughs> You're supposed to be killed if you violate the law. And therefore, if you, if everybody out here, based on the fact that all have said, you all can be killed or should be subject to death because the law does not play. But if you operate in the grace and the mercy of God, then God gives you that ability to overcome the weaknesses of the flesh through the spirit of God. That's what I want to make sure people understand, the spirit of God. So let me go back to the scriptures. Amen. Galatians 3.10. That's what I'm starting with. It said the righteous shall live by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. It says, for as many as are of the works of the law, that's what I'm trying to say, people, for many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. That's why I start my position. Don't try to enforce the law on people and definitely don't sit there and put yourself trapped up in, in, in being under the law yourself because if you're under the law, <laughs> The, the brother has it under the curse if you try to operate under the law. But if you operate under the spirit, now you have that mercy. Now you have that grace. Now you have that ability to sit there and say, God ain't, you know, God ain't finished with me. Please, what is that? What's that song? Please have mercy on me, for God is not through with me yet. Many of us get trapped up in the fact is that they don't have the mercy to allow people to grow. I'm telling you, I'm going by God's way. God says, you under the grace, you under the mercy. But if you want to live by the law, and then you want to, the problem is, I don't have a problem you living under the law, anybody, if you want to live under the law, but don't try to pose that law on other people. Don't sit there and try to get angry because somebody else is not abiding by the law, even though you're not even abiding by the law. Loud thing those who want to operate by the spirit of God to grow. Because verse 10 again, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. <laughs> for it is written, curse is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. It's a curse. I'll read it again. Curse is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So if you go by the law, you got to do everything that's written in the thing. You say, brother, that's everything. And the problem is, most of them not doing everything. <laughs> nobody's doing all the Ten Commandments. Nobody's doing the 300 and other 
laws that the Jewish people did in Leviticus, Leviticus um, is you're on a curse. And you're trying to curse other people by trying to put them under the law. And I'm telling you, you put me under the law for nothing. <laughs> I'm not looking for your judgment. I'm looking for God. And he already judged me through Christ Jesus. Amen. He says Amen. in verse 11, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. So why is it we're going to sit there and try to oppose the law of somebody when the Bible said, but no man is justified by the law? <laughs> it is evident. For the just shall live by faith, not by the law, but by faith. And the law is not, listen to this, the law is not of faith. The law is not of faith. Yes, the law is good, but if I can't live by it, because it's not of faith. Now, if I go by the law, I'm going and depending on my ability in the flesh to obey them, opposed to going by the Spirit of God and living by the Spirit of God. But the man that doeth them shall what? Live in them. Christ has redeemed all those out there that's listening. God, this, this, this word going out throughout the, 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 this, this whole country, this whole world. And it falls on the ears of somebody. We want to just go, verse 12. The, what, when I was at 12, it said, The law is not of faith. The man that doeth them shall live in them. But verse 13, that's where I was at. 13, 13. I know you got some mean, nasty Christian condemn most of you and say you're going to hell. You ain't going to make it. You got to sit there and tell them, man, I received my salvation through Christ Jesus, through Yeshua. It says right here, Christ has redeemed. This is the good news. This is the gospel. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. Christ, Christ took up my curse. Christ took up your curse. Christ took up the world's curse, and all the world needs to do is receive the gift of salvation and move forward, not by the law, because the law is weak. Somebody said, no, man, the law is not, that's what the scripture said. If I'm trying to live and be justified by the law, it's weak, and I'm weak because I can't obey all of it. Therefore, I need to move to another level that's why I'm sitting there trying to understand because obviously those people called it the ministry of God, those ministries had the audacity to condemn some people, made them inferior based on the color of their skin, and sit there and say it's okay to whack them in the head, it's okay to burn them alive, it's okay to, to treat them like crap, and okay to sit there and say that you can do anything to them because that's what a ministry of the law can do. I'm saying and saying that the true body of Christ never operated in the law because they ain't got time to operate in the law. They got time to operate in the grace. They got time to operate in the spirit. But I'm saying that's what ministries have done. Because right once again, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, then made a curse for us, curses everyone that hangs on a tree. That the blessing, come on, y'all. The blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. That's where my blessing comes from, not from the law. Huh. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So I'm going by faith, not by the law. Those who want to impose law, you go ahead. I ain't, gonna, I ain't, I ain't got time for you. <laughs> I'm going to go by the Spirit of God. And here's the example of people who try to operate by the law. I'm, I'm using this, this particular scripture. And I'm almost wrapping up too. But I know the time that people have is so precious, right? But I hope you take time to go back through these scriptures yourself and read them for yourself and understand we don't live by the law because we're just, the law is weak in the flesh. But the power 
and anointed is through the Spirit. This is what happened. And I think a lot of people go by the law, but as it because they like to be able to condemn and point at somebody else not living up to the law. And then at the same time, think they justified when they, 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 they obviously didn't fulfill everything, but they think they did. Look at this. This is the uh, a parable or story, the Pharisees and the tax collector, Luke 18. And he spake this parable unto a certain which trusted in themselves. And that's where I think legalism does. When people sit there and try to be legalistic, when they sit there and try to sit there and think that they they got they have a ride, then they trust in their own righteousness. It says right here, let me read it again. And he spake this parable unto a certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous. And that's a piece I'm, I'm really going after anyway. They despise others. And all I can see through all this use of, of, of racism and everything else, it, 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 the law allows people to despise others, put other people down. If a person, if, you know, if a person uh, slip up and fell, like a woman caught in an act of adultery, they sit there and say, I despise her, don't even know her. <laughs> Ready to pick up a soul because the law. Then when Christ came and told them, yeah, the law, this is what the law says, she should be stoned. But I want the person who has not sinned to cast the first stone. And everybody left from the oldest to the youngest because everybody else also deserves stoning themselves. <laughs> when we bring it up to modern times, there's a lot of people want to throw verbal stones at people because they have deemed that somebody has violated the law. They want to throw their verbal stone because you know those scriptures say stick. No, not a script, but the old saying sticks and stones. Don't can't break my what was what's that say, brother Asa? Stick and stone may break my bones. The words can never can happen. break my bones. Huh? <clears throat> Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's what they say. That's what they say, but in reality, words hurt more than sticks and stones. Words hurt people. Words causes people to have pain that can last for years. And, and suffer worse hurt. And the Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So words matter. And we got to sit there. But the fact is that people despise others because they condemn them and they trust in their own righteousness to condemn somebody. That's like, it's no different from the woman called an act of adultery. Those people felt that they had their own righteousness that they could despise that woman. Today's modern vernacular, people sit there and try to operate the law and despise other people who don't go by the law. And at the same time, they don't do it themselves because they check themselves. They have no business despising anybody. But this this, this parable he gave, it's not a parable, it's all a true story. He <laughs> said, but this is a true thing that there's people who, who trust in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, and one a Pharisee and the other a publican. And the pope and the Pharisee stood, listen to that, he stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee. Come on, now he's talking about, I thank thee, God, that I am not like other men are. Opposed to saying, God, I thank you that you have made me what I am. I am who I am because of you. I am because of your righteousness. This guy's going to go by his own righteousness. He said I, that I am not as other men are. And then he gives this list of other men's being. So th that's how we, we don't get legalistic. Legalism, that's what we do. We go sit there and try to sit there and say, I am not like these other men. 
I'm not an extortioner. I'm not unjust. I'm not an adulterer or even a this publican. He don't even know that publican. Huh? Uh, he, yeah, he's giving his deeds. And that's what sometimes when legalism do, they give their deeds of what they do, but they don't talk about the things that they don't want you to know about. But it's like, I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. This brother said, I'm checking the box. But uh, he's checking the box, right? The publican, on the contrast, says something different. Standing afar off. I mean, I ain't going around this old righteous dude. This man got his act together. This man is declaring his righteousness. I'm going to go on the far side. I'm going to stay away from that joker because I got some issues. Standing afar off would not lift so much as his eyes unto heaven, but spoke upon his breast, saying, God, which is what all of us should be doing. <laughs> God be merciful to me, a sinner. Verse 14, by Christ said, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. And the key point of that should be exalted by God. That's my position today. That's what I'm talking about today. That the fact is that you can't live by the law. We're not under the law because you can't make it by the law. And, and that's why I want to make sure people get that understanding. And, and the, the last piece of the scripture is the law in the promise. Listen to this. <laughs> this is, I like Galatians because it really talks about getting this legalism out of the way that some people like to do. It's so not listening to what the promises made by faith and the promises that comes under the law. And this is our wrapping up. Brother, as you guys say to say, if I wrap this up with these scriptures, but I'm telling you, man. I, I'm just trying to get, you know, we just were pouring in the scriptures and then you feel free to talk anytime you want, but I want to I wanna make sure they get the scriptures for them, me, you, all of us to chew on and meditate on. But I, I just like the fact that Christ has redeemed me for the curse of the law. <laughs> it, it says right here. You know, it, I, it was a couple of things that, that stood out to me. Um, the first thing was the curse. Yes. What is the curse? Because yeah. if those who live under the law uh -huh. are under the curse, yeah. Wait so do do people really know what the curse is? You know. Yeah, that's a good and point. Yeah. So. Uh, um, I'm not absolutely sure, but in my mind, it is that you are, the curse is the separation from God. Okay. I, I believe that that is the curse. Well, we do know that the way to sin is death. And we know that we talk about the physical death and the spirit of death. Spirit of death is separation from God, right? Uh, yes. We know that uh, Christ actually, uh, God actually turned his back on Christ when Christ took on our sin, right? Yeah. So <laughs> he took on the curse, which was the separation yes, sir. from God. And you remember what he said? But look, all that time he was walking through earth, all that time he was even doing the, 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 the whipping and everything else he said, it was like he, he was silent. You know, he made, I guess he made, it made, it sounded like he, he said it was silent. He just took it. But the time God turned his back on him because he now looked just, he took the sins of the world. Christ said, my God, my God. 
Why have thou forsaken me? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.